Okay, so for our last lab video, we are going to look at the eye. And I managed to get an eye model from my high school. I borrowed it so that I could go over these parts and pieces. I think the best and easiest way to learn the eye is just to look at the model and just go right through it. So I'm gonna go over uh, the anatomy of the eye that you have to know, and I'm gonna point out the different parts and pieces. So with the eyeball, uh, we have six muscles that we have to know. Now, um, they're pretty easy. Four of them are gonna be rectus muscles, and then two of them are gonna be oblique muscles. The rectus muscles go north, south, east, and west. That's how I always think of it. So we have superior, inferior, uh, medial, and lateral. So they are uh, cut off on all of our models. They would come back and kind of grab onto this optic nerve coming off. So this is superior rectus. This is inferior rectus. Then we've got our medial rectus and our lateral rectus. Now I know what you're thinking. How am I gonna know lateral from medial? Well, there's a couple of ways that you can do this. First of all, if you look at the eyeball directly from the top, and kind of look from the top down, you'll notice, if I can hold this right with the camera, you'll notice that the optic nerve coming off the back is going to be angled. And it's angled, it doesn't come straight off the back, it's actually angled. Let's see if I can, if I can show you this. Okay, see how it's angled. This is really hard to show. All right, so it's angled this direction. It's always angled medial. So you, what you gotta do is you gotta match it up, look at the optic nerve and say, okay, it's angled this way, so this is medial. So this is the medial uh, rectus, this is the lateral rectus, all right? Another way to, to remember it that might be a little bit easier for you, is that all of our models in lab are left eyes, except one. So if you look at a model that's like the one I have in my hand, they're all left eyes. We do have one right eye in the lab and it has a green base to it. So this base is green. I don't know if they'll have pictures of that on the test, but all these models are left eye. So if you think left eye, well then this is always lateral, this is always medial. Okay, so those are the four rectus muscles. Then we have two oblique muscles. We have an oblique muscle on the top. See, it cuts across like this. It's kind of white, it's cutting across. And then we have another oblique muscle on the bottom that's cutting across like this. These are the obliques. So this is the inferior oblique. This white one is the superior oblique. So those are the oblique muscles. So you've got six muscles all right now let's just work we're going to work from the outside in to go over all of these um, parts and pieces that are on your list so first of all the uh, outside covering we call them tunics the white of your eye is the sclera so all of this is the sclera see the optic nerve is coming out of the sclera this is all sclera the front of the sclera is clear. It's called the cornea. So the cornea is the clear part. Cornea is the clear part. Sclera is the white of your eye. The muscles are attaching to the sclera. 
So all six of those muscles are on the sclera. All right. Now, if I pull the sclera off, we're going to see that we actually have, um, this is kind of hard to, to maybe tilt, but we're going to have two chambers of the eyeball. We're going to have a chamber in the front. That's full of a liquid called aqueous humor. And then we're going to have a chamber in the back that's full of this jelly I can pull off. All right. So I'm going to take the jelly out for a second. So if you look at the eyeball, we've got an outer anterior chamber right here between the cornea and the lens there. That is called the anterior chamber. It's full of aqueous humor. It's a very liquidy, watery substance. So they can't put it in the model because, you know, you can't have a model of liquid water. But then the inside of the eye, this chamber is called the posterior chamber, and it is full of a jelly called the vitreous humor. See, the vitreous humor fits right into this model like this. All right. So you've got this vitreous humor and this aqueous humor. The aqueous humor, if you get too much aqueous humor, that's uh, glaucoma. So what it can do is it, it you produce more aqueous humor, this watery substance here, and it can push on the eye and damage it. If you have floaters, if you have the, those floater things in your in your vision, those are crystallizations of this vitreous humor. All right. So um, our two chambers are inside this middle tunic that I'm going to pull out. This middle tunic is really brown on the um, outside with a bunch of blood vessels. This is called the choroid coat. So you have the choroid coat and coming off of the back of the choroid coat is your optic nerve. And then on the front of the choroid coat, and I only have half of this choroid coat, Sorry, there should be another half right here. But the um, front of the choroid coat is going to be the iris. So this, it's a donut. See, it's this. I've got half a donut here. And this half a donut is the iris. This is the color of your eyes. So if you have brown eyes, blue eyes, green eyes, it's the iris that's, that's, um, that's the color. So see, it's, it's the front of this choroid coat. Okay, so the iris is going to have a hole in the middle. This hole in the middle is known as the pupil. So the iris is the donut. The pupil is the donut hole. All right, now on the inside, you'll notice that it's a couple of different colors. All right, maybe the lighting's not all that great, but if you look... We've got uh, two different colors on the inside. You kind of have this light color, kind of light tan, and then you got this dark red, all right? Now, the dark red is called the, the um, ciliary body, and it contains muscles in it. I just turned on my light, maybe that'll help. It's not really helping much. But if you look, the ciliary body is this dark red inner part. So it's all of this dark red stuff. And the ciliary body contains muscles that actually hold the lens in place. So the lens sticks in the ciliary body like this. Whoops. Or it can fall out. Let's do that again. So it sticks in like this. Now, holding the lens to the ciliary body are these ligaments called suspensory ligaments. And you can actually see them as these white, uh, these white lines. They are suspensory ligaments that are gonna hold our lens in place. So the lens is held by those suspensory ligaments and the ciliary body 
has muscles. And what happens is the ciliary body can pull on the suspensory ligaments and then change the shape of your lens so you focus. That's how we focus. It's pretty cool. So the front is gonna have is gonna be the iris. So the light is gonna um, the iris can change diameter. So it can get smaller and bigger. This is how you dilate your pupils. Your pupil can get bigger or smaller, allowing more or less light in to hit the lens. Then the ciliary body has these suspensory ligaments that are holding that lens in place. And if we contract our ciliary um, body, the ciliary muscles, we pull on those suspensory ligaments and that pulls on our lens and then the lens can change shape. So what happens is the lens can sh change shape like this. Uh, it can be kind of relaxed or we can pull it flat. So if we're seeing up close, the lens is very round. But if we want to see far away, we can pull that lens flat and that allows us to focus um, at a distance. And that's all done by the ciliary body pulling on the suspensory ligaments and it's changing the shape of this lens. The lens is very elastic. As we get older, our lens can get less and less elastic and that's why we need glasses um, for some people. We call that uh, disorder presbyopia where we lose some elasticity in our lens and that's when you know you get into your uh, uh, 40s or 50s and you need reading glasses. It's because the lens is not a, as elastic as it used to be. Okay, so um, that takes care of the front part of our model. The back part, I'm going to take the lens out here so I can tilt it. If you look, the back part is made up of a light tan that has a bunch of blood vessels in it. That whole two thirds of the back of the eye is called the retina. The retina is the part of your eye that's going to turn light into action potentials. So remember we covered the ear and we learned that the organ of corti is where we turn sound waves into action potentials. Well, the retina, with all these blood vessels, that's where we take and we turn light into action potentials. And then that light, uh, the action potential from the light is going to move through this optic nerve and then out to your brain, all right? So uh, the retina, has a couple of parts that you have to know. Uh, the first one is called the macula lutea. And on this model, uh, well, it's on there, okay. It's really hard to see, but on the back of the retina, if you look right here, there's a little um, pink circle right there where my pointer is. That is called the macula lutea. It is your greatest um, area of acuity on the retina. So as the light comes in to the retina, it's going to um, directly hit that macula lutea. Boy, this is hard to do in, in the video here. So the direct line of light hitting the back of the retina is going to hit the macula lutea. Now, if the macula lutea is uh, dying or damaged, we call that macular degeneration. So the that pink, and um, you'll see it in the eyeballs in lab, they're gonna be uh, maybe a purple color, but see that really uh, slight pink circle right there is the macula lutea. Where the nerve comes in, I should mention the center of the macula lutea is called the fovea centralis. It's the very center of the macula lutea. So like when you are looking at a, um, a period at the end of the sentence, that period is should be 
hitting your retina right at the very center of the macula lutea called the fovea centralis. Usually on the test, and I'm gonna to have to grade these tests by hand anyway, so I'll make sure. Uh, when one of these structures is on the test, half of the class says macula lutea, half says fovea centralis because it's really difficult to tell the two apart since the fovea centralis is the very center of this little dot called the macula lutea. So um, I will make sure that you get credit for either one of those answers. Um, but um, the, um, the uh, area of the retina where the optic nerve comes in you can see the optic nerve is coming into the retina there's actually no retina there and that uh, white area where there's no retina is called the blind spot or uh, the optic disc either one again is fine to to say but there's no retina here. So you have a blind spot in your vision. So if you close one eye, there's going to be a spot in your vision that's a dead spot, that, that there's no light. That is because this optic nerve has no uh, rods and cones that make up the retina to turn the light into an action potential. So this, this area is called the optic disc or blind spot. And this is why the optic nerve is off center because you don't want this optic nerve coming out right where the fovea centralis would be because then your blind spot would be right at your greatest um, area of acuity. So it's off center so that you know your blind spot's out here. Now what's cool is each eyeball has a blind spot but the, the uh, opposite eye fills in the, the blank so that when you have both eyes open and you're looking around, you don't have a blind spot in your eye because your left eye fills the right blind spot and your right eye fills the left blind spot. You can only see a blind spot ironically, see a blind spot. You, <laughs> you can only Notice your blind spot if you have an eye closed. So if I have an eye closed, I can find my blind spot out in the uh, my vision out here. Usually the blind spots are going to be somewhere in this area out here. So see if you can find your blind spot. Okay, so I believe... That takes care of our eye. I think I covered all the major structures of the eye. And so um, this marks the end of our test number four material. Uh, make sure you check out Dr. West's video. She does another video just like this, but with the models that are in our lab class that will probably be pictured on the exam. So watch her video on eye and hopefully um, with the combination of all these videos, you've got all the material for test number four. Um, test number four is going to be next week um, on Wednesday. So just to double check with this, um, it should be uh, May 6th for us. So our test will be May 6th. It'll be just like the other one. And I do apologize about the other test. The, the um, test did not accept misspellings and, and uh, acceptable alternative answers. And so I had to go back and I had to regrade everything by hand, which I'll do right away for this um, fourth test. But um, hopefully you noticed your grade went way up when I regraded it and I reevaluated it. You know, if some of you spelled one thing wrong, it just marked it wrong. So I went ahead and changed that and gave you credit for it. So anyway, I'm rambling on. Have a wonderful day. I will see you someday. Uh, have, a <laughs> have a great summer and uh, good luck on your test. I know you'll do good. All right. I'll talk to you later.